Well, g'day curd nerds, and welcome to an Anzac Day version of Ask the Cheese Man. Well, g'day curd nerds. G'day curd nerds. Well, 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 welcome to an Anzac Day version of Ask the Cheese Man. This is episode 58, uh, which is very cool. And uh, I'm back from the Dawn Service, which is a, uh, a ceremony we have here in Australia to remember um, our fallen veterans and uh, those still serving. Um, so uh, just a quick bit of housekeeping, first of all, of course. Um, like to thank uh, Aaron for being the patron this week. Um, as for videos that we're producing this week, we're going to be producing. Uh, there's going to be a pecorino ricotta salada taste test, so that's coming up this weekend. Um, I'm also in production of a cheese called Farmhouse Cheddar Blue, which is a basically a stir curd cheddar. Um, that I'm um, basically put some blue uh, mould, Penicillium Rogue 40 in, and uh, hopefully that, fingers crossed, it's looking good so far. Um, that'll be all cool. Um, also, um, I've actually got a, another video that I'm in production of, which is a, a mushroom risotto I cooked last night. Now, I'm thinking of putting a few recipe style videos up on the channel um that have cheese in them so the cheeses that i've made then i'll cook with them as well so um, i was hoping to get your feedback um on that but we'll see what happens when we put the first one up and of course um we i produced a a, a vlog uh video this week um so you can check out the vlog channel um kim should have the link there um somewhere um, she'll pop that in there for the, the vlog channel. Okay, um, right, let's say hello. Hello to a few people. We'll say g'day to Joy. Uh, time for illumination. Hello. Nora. Kim's already banned somebody. Fantastic. Brizzy girl, how are you? Um, Aaron, um, you, you say you got no video. Just refresh the page, mate. It should work. Looks like the live stream's working. Uh, says the stream health is healthy. Okay, um, who else we got there? We got Alison, g'day, um, Hunter, George, Timothy, um, Rajesh, um, Brian, Alex, William. Uh, good to see. Uh, can you call you can call me Curd Nerd? Uh, thanks. Um, and Almighty Theron. Okay, cool. Vodafone P prepaid. Oh, well, that, that's your problem. Uh, Mike. All right, so I think we've got some questions somewhere. Um, no, we haven't got any yet. Uh, Ken's put the blog link up. Thank you very much. All those who um, would like to follow things that we do here on a weekly basis behind the scenes, not necessarily cheese making, check out that link that Kim's just put up for the vlog channel. Um, and, yeah, there's some, some good stuff over there uh, about the way we live here Um a little bit more sustainably on the planet, uh, it all helps. Okay, so um, I'll just read out one of the well, a few comments here. So Rajesh says, "Hey Gavin, I've only, I have only a moderate interest in cheese making, but I love watching your videos because you're so earnest and awesome. Keep it up. You're the Bob Ross of cheese making. Thank you very much, Rajesh. Um, appreciate that." Um, um, Bruce says, would love to see recipes using cheese you've made. Yes, yeah, so hopefully, um, Bruce, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, and the first one is mushroom risotto. Now, Kim and I had it for dinner last night. It was absolutely delicious. Really was. And you'll see on the weekend, the video, the Pecorino Romano. Um, no, no, so not the Pecorino Romano, sorry. The Pecorino Ricotta Salata which was basically ricotta that I made from the leftover whey from the sheep's milk. 
um, from the cheese that I made Pecorino Romano from. And I'll tell you what, the flavours are very complex and they are a little bit pecant, as in spicy, but uh, it tastes very, very good. Um, Dylan asks, are you going to the Mould Festival this year? Uh, for those who don't know, there's a festival here um, in Melbourne. It was the inaugural one last year. Unfortunately, Dylan, we can't go to the Mould Festival this year because we're actually teaching a soap-making class um, and the people have already paid. So, um, yeah, so we're going to a soap-making class. So I can't go to the Mould Festival. I would have liked to. Um... Uh, let me see. How do I translate that? Let me just do a bit of a translating thing. I think it's Abdullah. I can't read Arabic very well. Let me just check. Okay, Abdul Malik. G'day, how are you? Um, can you make cheese without milk? Yes, you can. You can make nut cheese. Or vegan cheese. Um, I haven't got any videos on that yet, but I am working on them. Um, so, yes, you can. But it's not technically cheese, because cheese is basically milk from a mammal, um, rennet, um, cultures sometimes. If you're using raw milk, you don't need cultures because the culture's already there. Uh, salt, and that's about it, really. Uh, and that's how you make cheese. Okay. Um, Curd nerd asks, what's your favourite eating cheese? Ah, oh, looks so difficult. Um, I do like a, a very nice triple cream brie. Um, I must admit that that is a very tasty uh, cheese, um, but I do like all cheeses. I really don't have a favourite uh, because how can you be the cheese man if you um, if you've got favourites? Okay, Bruce says, I know it may sound sacrilege to you, but have you ever attempted to make a processed cheese? No, I have never attempted to make processed cheese. Um, because, because processed cheese, it is basically a combination of some milk solids, uh, a lot of oil, a lot of trans fatty oils. Um, so, yeah, it's it's very, well, it's not difficult to make, but it, it's not cheese. Okay, Hunter says, I love you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Joy says, I've made some camemberts and they have begun to produce white mould fungus, but they do have a slightly pink colour. I wash off and they don't smell very good. Uh, could it be too much moisture? Uh, Joy, yes, it is. That uh, The pink mould is, I can't remember the name of it, but it's uh, an infection. And if the, um, and it's not um, Brevia bacteria linens either. It's a different sort of mould. And usually that pink mould inhibits the growth of any white mould uh, or penicillium uh, candidum. So you may need to either eat them now um, as a fresh cheese or ditch them because I think once that pink, uh, the, the pink mould um, takes root, you just won't be able to grow the, um, the white mould unless you dry them out completely, like air dry them, um, and see if the mould grows back. Uh, Mark says, I can't find brie containers, oh, sorry, brine containers and ripening containers you always use. Where can we find these? Um, there's a company in Australia called Decor. Now, I did have some for sale as in the ripening boxes, um, but they're like any plastic tub. You have a look, um, uh, that, they're a, a brand called Microsafe. Um based on uh, the Decor range, or that's the company. And the uh, the brine container they use is a bit of a hodgepodge because... Righto. Oops. All right, so if something happened then, it didn't connect. Uh, okay, we're back again, which is good. Stream is better. It's all fresh. Okay. Let's keep going. Where did I get up to? Um, sorry. Hey, the brining container. So it is a, it's a basically a microwave rice cooker, and the rack that pushes the cheese down. It um, it, it was from a different container, but basically all you need is any plastic container that can hold that amount of brine, and all you need to do is at the halfway mark is flip it over, 
Um, so flip the cheese over. So there's nothing specific about those brining containers. They just seem to hold that volume of brine that's just right for the cheese. Um, so I think it's about 2.7 litres, if I remember rightly. The ripening boxes, um, any plastic container with a rack. Now you can get a plastic container and get a couple of bamboo mats, stack them on top of each other, and you should be fine. Um, so, Mark, hopefully that answers your question, mate. Okay. Um, Floki, good morning to you. Dylan, how are you? Um, would adding lipase to ricotta salada give it better flavour? Yeah, it probably would, Dylan. Uh, and you could... The only problem with that is because ricotta salada is made from whey that, that you then heat up to about 95 Celsius, which is... I don't know when Fahrenheit, lots. Um, over 100, uh, 98, uh, 205 Fahrenheit. Um, you're heating it up so much that the lipase would actually die. So there's not much point really. Um, yeah, so good thought, but now I thought it through, no, it wouldn't work. Lindsay says, I have noticed when watching your video on making Parmesan that you mention, uh, you mention adding lipase. Um, however, I did hear you say that you do not need to use lipase if using raw milk. Why is this? Um, the reason being is when you use raw milk is that all of the lactic bacteria are still present. They haven't been killed by the pasteurization process um, and uh, they will develop over time. Uh, as in the flavours will develop stronger over time. So when you're using raw milk, you don't need to use um, any starter culture the starter culture is present. However, if you want to make a specific type of cheese, then you may need to add in. If you just want to make a if you just want to make a, a tome style cheese, um, then don't add any cultures. Uh, and many of the um, the AOC and AOP um, designation cheeses in Europe use raw milk and they don't use starter cultures. Um, the lactic bacteria is native to their region. And that's why the cheeses are regionally designated. Okay. Uh, Ax Axel says, how did I get into cheese making? Uh, look, I just wanted to basically learn how to make my own food. Milk was the next, sorry, using milk and, and making cheese was the next uh, logical progression. Okay. Um, Almighty says, can you make cheese with soy milk or will it turn into tofu? Uh, and what's the easiest cheese to melt at low temperature? Thanks. Uh, yeah, soy milk will make tofu. That's about all it will make. Um, but you can't coagulate soy milk with rennet like you can milk. It doesn't have the same chemical properties. Um, you have. There's another. Um, there's a coagulant that you use for soy milk, um, which is in a powdered form. And what's the easiest cheese to melt at low temperature? Um, one of the easiest cheeses to melt is uh, either mozzarella or um, or a good cheddar will melt. Um, but mainly, a low, most of the cheeses that don't involve a high temperature to cook them during the cheese making process, so if it hovers around 38 Celsius during the cooking of the curds, those cheeses will generally melt. So, okay. Um, Peter says, hello, first time here. Love your videos. Thank you, Peter. Um, William says, have I ever made a smoked cheese? Uh, I've made a smoke flavoured cheese. So if you have a look at, um, there's a, a liquid smoked gouda that I made. So if Kim could put a link to the video, that would be fantastic. Um, okay. So where am I up to? Um, Nurb says, have, have hi, ever made a cheese with sugar instead of salt for aging? Um, no, I haven't. Um, the sugar would, uh, cause fermentation in the cheese. Um, in addition to the lactic bacteria, give them more food. Um, so it would actually go off and go sour because the salt is used as a preservative for the cheese. You can add sugar to fresh cheeses after the cheese has been made. Now, fresh cheeses only keep for a couple of weeks, so they won't go through that fermentation process. If you're going to make cheeses like cheddar style or um, washed curd cheeses, 
then you can't substitute the salt. They have salt has to absolutely be there. Um, where are we up to? Uh, time for illumination. Is that an artificial or a real flower? No, it's a artificial one. They traditionally put um, hand out poppies or imitation poppies uh, for the poppies that grew on uh, Flanders fields uh, or Flanders during World War One. Okay. Um, Abdul Malik says, um, how and why does butter sometimes have yellow colour? The yellow colour is uh, beta carotene, which is present in the milk from cows that uh, eat grass. Um, cows that are fed on pasture, uh, sorry, fed on grains um, and silage, the uh, milk doesn't, sorry, the butter doesn't tend to go yellow. Okay, uh, Manuel says, Hi, Gavin. I've tried some of your cheeses and they are all fine and delicious. Uh, I'd like to know what's the difference between mesophilic cultures because I'm using a universal culture. Thanks. Okay, mesophilic cultures, there's two main lactic bacteria within them. So there's, um, uh, let me think, uh, Lactobacillus lactis subspecies Cremorus and Lactobacillus subspecies. Uh, lactus they're the two main mesophilic cultures they come in pairs basically for a, a universal sort of a mesophilic culture then there are other mesophilic cultures like um, aromatic mesophilic cultures um, that contain um, uh, diacetyl properties like um, let me think of a culture oh uh, uh, what's it floridanica that's the other one so Floridanica has two more cultures added to it to give it a creamy flavour or a buttery taste on the mouth and also uh, to create a little bit of gas to make some um, bubbles or sort of eyes in your cheese. So um, they're, the, um, they're the basic mouthophilics. There are a whole bunch of other strains, but um, the Cremorus and the Lactus are the two main ones. Okay, um, Fritz says thumbs up. Thanks, Fritz. Um, I'm way behind, I think. Um, 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 um. Okay, William says, oh, three cheeses. Excellent. <laughs> Is that like three thumbs up? Um, I once tried to make French soup. Instead of using any kind of cream, I used white French cheese and it worked out. Balance the heat of the peppers. That's nice. Um... Yeah, normally, traditionally, um, French onions or French onion soup uh, floating on top is actually Gruyere. So there's a fun fact for you. Um, Mr. FG says, hi, cheese man. Um, what did you do to earn those medals? Uh, good question. Um, the first one is from, that one, is from uh, Liberation of Kuwait. Um, I served on HMAS Adelaide or Her Majesty's Australian ship Adelaide, um, over the period of the, um, what was it called, Desert Storm. Um, so I was on the ship. The other one is for 20 years of service, and the other one is a uh, service medal they've given all servicemen um, that have uh, served since World War II. So that's what they are. Um, okay, next question. Uh, can we make our own com com combination of bacteria to add to the milk to produce our own flavours. Uh, Nora, yes, of course you can. Um, you can, but you'll have to test the results. Obviously, I can't determine for you what the result of your cheese is going to be. So, yeah, so look, before, um, let me think, what's a good example? So, here's a cheese for you. Um, um, what was it called? Manchego. So, Manchego is traditionally a sheep's milk cheese. Now, to make it taste kind of like Manchego using cow's milk, I combined mesophilic starter culture, thermophilic starter culture, and lipase. So three different types of cultures and enzymes to produce a, um, a, a likeness of, um, of Manchego. So, yeah, you can. Okay, Timothy says... Uh, are you also going to do a homebrew channel? My goodness, that would be fun, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, I do make homebrew, but unfortunately, homebrewing 
is a very saturated um, space as far as topics go on YouTube. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, I probably will not be doing a homebrew channel. Uh, Jersey says, uh, what's a good beginner cheese board? Um, look, I think, Jersey, if you um, have a white mold cheese, a cheddar cheese, and what's another good one? And maybe a, a washed uh, curd cheese like a Gouda or a Edam or a Marsden or um, a Havati. So those sort of softer, milder cheeses. So I think that would be a nice, simple, balanced cheese board. I'm actually going to do some cheese boards. Um, a lot of my cheeses are coming ready at once, uh, and I'm going to show how to do um, a well-balanced cheese board and some of the other things to put onto the cheese board. Um, Alessandro says, hello, uh, you know how to tell me um, uh, Faso cheese is fresh to stay with smell and sour and flavour. Nope, you've lost me there. Sorry. Um, Bruce, I see mostly, you mostly use cow's milk. Can goat's milk be substituted or would it change the taste and texture? Also, can I use milk that's been frozen? Good question, Bruce. Um, yes, you can use goat's milk for most of the cheeses um, that I um, produce. You just need to add uh, about 10% less rennet. It tends to coagulate a lot faster. Um, also, you can use milk that's been frozen. I've done it before. Uh, in fact, if you go back and have a look at my Pecorino Romano video, that was um, made using frozen used milk. So, um, yeah, try that out. Okay. Um, Alex says, could you try Mexican string cool? Cool. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Let's have a look. I know how to say that one. Oaxaca, I think, which is a bit like mozzarella. Yes, indeed it is. And, yeah, it is on my lists, list of cheeses. I'll write it down as a reminder. O-A-X-A-C-A. -A -A. Oaxaca, I think that's how you pronounce it. All right, yes, so thanks, Alex, for that. Um, okay, looking for the next question. Uh, Mark says... Uh, I am making ricotta salata. I use batches of ricotta. I store it in the fridge instead of making fresh ricotta. Do you foresee any issues with the final outcome? No, I don't think so. Um, as long as uh, the ricotta is still okay and it hasn't started to become contaminated, then I think you'd be able to press it no problems at all, Mark. Um, just make sure you salt it um, quite heavily on the surface. Um, I tend to add a little bit, like a teaspoon, in the... Um, into the ricotta it's itself before I mill it and then put it into the uh, the mould and press it. Tim says, um, hey, recently found your channel. Love it. Thanks, mate. Um, we've started making cheese and have done mozzarella, burrata and goat's cheese. Mozzarella doesn't stay white. Uh, when we finish, uh, it turns a little yellow. Any tips? Uh, no, because um, like I mentioned before, cow's milk has beta carotene in it. Buffalo milk tends to not have as much beta carotene in it. Uh, that's why buffalo mozzarella uh, is white, basically. Um, and that's why cow's milk mozzarella tends to go a bit yellow. That's the reason. Uh, thanks for that link, Kim. I appreciate it. William says, what's your favourite English cheese? Oh, look, I'm quite partial to a double Gloucester. And I also really like... Uh, the flavour of Wensleydale. Uh, so you can call me uh, Wallace if you want. Um, uh, Bass Stig says, can you name uh, one of the most expensive and delicious cheeses out there? Well, see, it's all relative. It depends on how far you are away from the source of the cheese. Uh, I was looking at um, I was looking at a um, a Roquefort cheese, you know, the blue sheep's cheese from France. And um, our local supermarket had some. It was hundred and twenty dollars a kilogram um, for for that wheel of cheese. So that was one of the most expensive. And, and Roquefort is absolutely one of the most delicious 
blue cheeses that I've ever tried. Uh, so it, it is all relative. So a cheese that's made here in Australia, an artisan cheese, uh, for instance, if you tried to buy that in Europe, it probably would cost another $120. So it depends on how close you are to the source. Uh, but yeah, Roquefort is a delicious raw sheep's milk cheese. Okay, um, Sharan says, uh, hi Gavin, hi Kim. Have you ever used or heard about uh, uh, xylitol in cheese? I've been making kefir cheese with lemon and xylitol. Uh, thanks. Um, uh, hang on a minute. Oh, all right. Um, yeah, I was having some technical difficulties. So xylitol is an artificial sugar, I think. Hang on, let me just check. I remember rightly. Yeah, xylitol is a sugar. It's a uh, used as a sweetener. Um, it doesn't ferment. Um, but yes, I suppose you can use xylitol in cheese making. However, I was reading somewhere the other day that uh, it's not particularly good for you. So as all artificial sugar, mind even normal sugar is. Uh, not so good, but uh, yeah, as an artificial sweetener, it's a sorry, it's a sugar alcohol. It's a sugar alcohol that's used as a sweetener. Look, personally, I wouldn't. I just use. Um, let me think. The sugar we have here is unrefined, so we use Rapajura sugar, which is just pressed sugar cane basically, and we find that is a lot better for you than what either say white sugar or xylitol or what have you. In fact, if you actually feed xylitol to animals. Uh, like uh, dogs and um, uh, and birds, it actually kills them. So keep that away from your pets. Hunter says, have a good Anzac Day, sir. Have a good day, Anzac Day yourself, Hunter. Um, Des says, heating milk for raclet as you speak. Well done. Um, hopefully your raclet turns out as well as mine did. It was absolutely delicious. I'm actually so glad that I've still got half a wheel left and... Uh, we're going to crack that open sometime soon. Uh, Nora, thanks for answering. No problems at all, Nora. Um, Fatelix says, your suit is one of a kind. Thank you very much. Um, Damon says, great to see your channel growing. My wife and I hope it continues long into the future. Um, so do I, Damien. Um, in fact, speaking of channels, it is getting very close to um, 100,000 subscribers. So if you know any friends, then uh, feel free to uh, to um, share on social media and, uh, and get them to subscribe as well. It'd be great to hit that uh, 100,000 mark um, sooner rather than later. Uh, Molly Wallop says, hi, Gavin and Kim. Sorry I'm late. Hope you're good. Yep, doing okay. Uh, Leo says, if I can find where I, where, where did Leo go? Leo, any chance you'll get around to making a video on making Cam and Zola? Uh, yeah, it's on the list, Leo. Uh, these things take time, so I will get there. Lindsay, uh, I spent a fair time, bit of, sorry, I'll start again. I spent a fair bit of time last week searching for a supply of sheep's used milk. What a waste of time that was. Do you know where it's possible to buy sheep's milk in Australia? Um, I was actually given some sheep's milk um, by a farmer uh, named Graham, and his farm is called uh acacia salt bush lamb so he's actually uh, milking some of his ewes as an experiment so he can make uh used milk sheep uh used milk sheep <laughs> used milk cheese so uh the sounding guy i know of who's actually milking his sheep um and as i said uh acacia salt bush lamb you can find him on facebook under that moniker uh damien hey gavin Mike philly has been ripening for close to a week now it doesn't look much like much of a rind is forming. Does this mean the cheese is too moist? Um, yeah, look, it usually dries out fairly completely by week two. So don't be too fussed on the rind after a week. Uh, it will form. Um, but yeah, just uh, if mould does grow on it, then don't forget to give it a bit of a brush or, um, or wash with a simple brine solution. 
it'll dry out eventually. Maybe it could be a little bit too moist in there. Having said that, if you do let it go, if you do take it out of the um, uh, out of the ripening box, then you'll find that it will crack because because uh, it's so highly salted. Okay, Andrew says, uh, would you? What would you suggest for a first cheese to make? Oh, look, start on the simple ones first. Try paneer, um, try ricotta, ricotta salata. Uh, then uh, have a go at maybe halloumi, um, queso fresco. Um, not in that order, but you can any order you want. And then once you've got those cheeses on your belt, then give one of the uh, harder style ones a try. Um, like kefili, uh, kefili is a very good starter cheese. It only takes uh, three weeks to mature, so um, you'll have no problems there. And you'll get some semi-instant satisfa satisfaction out of having made a semi-hard cheese. Uh, Diva says, hey, Gavin, been watching your vids for a while. I don't personally make cheese, but your videos are really interesting. And it looks so cool. Thank you very much, Diva. Appreciate you watching and subbing. Aaron says, hey, Gavin, good to see you again. Just an update. Uh, yeah, just an update. The smoke flavor we used on our Gouda ended up uh, with vinegar in it. So kind of threw the taste um, off, I guess, a little. I need to use a cold smoker. Yeah, you probably would, mate. Um, yeah, I checked the ingredients of, um, of our one, and it just said um, smoke flavor. And it didn't really say any of the other ingredients. What I think is the water was passed through a smoker, so it collected the carbon and made the smokiness flavour. Um, I have seen a few videos on YouTube on how they actually collect that liquid um, and sell it as liquid smoke, um, but they tend not to have vinegar in it, so that's very surprising. Okay, uh, Lawrence says, uh, question, why is vegetarian cheese not the standard in most stores? Um, that's because most traditional cheeses still use animal rennet. Um, to get the flavour that's been passed down from um, cheesemaker to cheesemaker. Uh, that'll be the answer to that question, I reckon. Uh, Damien, have you ever been, have you always been good at chemistry or did you start after you got into cheese? Um, I'll have to admit that when I was a young lad, I did have a chemistry set, you know, one of those um, ones you buy off the shelf and do all these experiments. So I was really into science as a child. Um, so, yeah, not bad at chemistry and pronouncing chemical names. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, periodic tables, one of those things that are pretty cool as far as I'm concerned. But, yeah, chemistry, well, makes the world go around. Um, so does science. Okay, um, let's have a look. Uh, Timothy says, what's my opinion of Limburger? Well, besides being a very stinky cheese, it's very tasty. So don't let the smell put you off. Give it a go. Sharon says, thanks very much, no problems. Uh, Lauren says, where I live in the Netherlands, they uh, mostly use animal-based rennet. Uh, yeah, yeah, they do, um, because that's tradition. Um, but you you will find cheeses, well, well, I dare say, supermarkets in Netherlands are the same as supermarkets here. You will find cheeses with that use vegetarian rennet. you just got to hunt them down. Okay. Um, where are we up to? Oh, I'm getting close. Uh, da, 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 da. Am I only the only one that he's out of focus for? Let me just have a look. Am I in focus? No, it looks like I'm in focus there. Um, yes, the picture is not good today. Yeah, hopefully my son's not streaming on his computer. That's probably why the picture's not so good. It is saying the stream health is okay, so... Um, yeah, maybe the uh, archive version will be better. Okay, um, Mark says, are you saying used milk? No, I'm saying use, as in E-W-E-S, use, as in female sheep. There you go. Yep, and Bruce, yeah, picked it up, good one. <laughs> um, uh, Masaki says, have you ever thought about making bigger wheels of cheese? Uh, yeah, I have, but I just don't have the facilities to um, to press them, basically. I could make larger cheeses, um, but the the equipment I've got is only basically for small one and a half kilo cheeses. So um, I, I just don't have the, uh, and getting the milk and all that sort of stuff and keeping it refrigerated until 
I went to make cheese and it's just one big headache. So I tend to make those small wheels of cheese. Um, obviously, by using a lot more milk, you can make lots of che lot more cheese uh, in one session and your time is better spent and you're more productive. But hey, I'm a home cheese maker. That's what I do. SMF says uh, there are lots of regional cheeses and location environment does make a lot of difference in the flavour. Is it an Australian cheese that's unique? Um, yeah, there's some unique cheeses. Uh, Nick Haddo down at um, uh, Bruni Island Cheese Co. Um, down in Tasmania. Um, they make some raw milk cheeses down there uh, that have bacteria that are common to that area. So it's the terra, terra, terror. I can't remember. It's a French cheese for environment or earth. French word, sorry, not cheese. Um, so they're, they, they're uniquely Australian cheeses. Um, I can't think of any others. There are some raw cheeses made in the Adelaide Hills in South Australia. And they're unique to there. They use raw milk as well. It tends to be the raw milk cheeses that, uh, that gain more from the location and environment. Whereas cheeses made with pasteurised milk, all those bacteria that are native to that area uh, are killed off. So it's more raw milk cheeses. Oh, Brooke asks, does the quick mozzarella melt good? And what causes it to melt if heated? Um, yes, it does tend to melt fairly good. The quick mozzarella, not as good as the traditional mozzarella, where you start a culture to, um, to acidify the curds. Um, quick mozzarella tends to turn into a big white blob uh, but it is stretchy when you eat it on pizza and stuff like that uh, and what causes it to melt the fat the fat in the cheese that's what causes it to melt um, smf says uh, by the way i am near the only place in america that still makes limburger in the traditional way the local cheese shop uses it to make a lovely limburger and onion sandwich which is great with a pint indeed it would be it would be very nice um, Darcy says, aging gouda and cheddar temperature around four to seven, will it age properly or will it have to age for a longer time? Uh, Darcy, it'll just have to, it'll take you a lot longer, that's all. Um, I would add at least a month on to its maturation time um, at those lower temperatures. Uh, and Darcy says, uh, love the show uh, from Canada. All right, so we're out of questions. Um, Hopefully there's some more soon. I'm, I've been too quick today. Oh, my daughter, I've got a visitor. She's going. Are you? Yes. Kiss. Yeah. See your daughter. You're also like lagging for the nap. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's crazy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, that was my daughter. Um, she came with, um, she came to me on Anzac Day. So that was lovely. So did my son, Ben. Okay. Um... Uh, Asim says, hi, sir, can you teach us how to make Parmesan cheese? Uh, yes, there's already two Parmesan videos on the channel. Um, check them both out and you'll learn how to make Parmesan. Mark said, I just noticed that some solid we're using has an anti-caking agent in it. Will it use, will this cause issues? Mark, um, uh, no, it won't. It won't cause any issues at all. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it wanted to start. I I actually use um, cheese salt with um, any caking agent in as well. If you can get pure salt, then that's fantastic, um, but uh, it won't hurt it. Uh, Bruce says, is there a cheese that you will never eat again? Uh, yeah, probably St. Marcelin. The ones I made anyway were a little bit ripe, so I probably wouldn't eat those again. Maybe if I went to France and uh, checked them out for real, I'd probably eat them, but uh, not my version anyway. Dylan says, uh, a colder maturation temperature means you need to mature longer, but then could you put Bel Paese in the normal cheese cave to speed it up? Uh, good question. Yes, you probably could, but Bel Paese is one of those cheeses that you wouldn't because after the, I think it's a two to three weeks maturation, um, it is very strong flavoured anyway. If you put it into a cheese cave, uh, then it would be... Uh, it will be very, very strong. Okay, Singh says, uh, and if you want to tell us all the names of yeasts and mesophiles for cheese, 
uh, because it is well quoted in your books. Thanks. And if you, uh, yeah, they're in the books. Okay, Bruce says, better yet, is there another cheese you'll never make again? Yeah, probably St. Marcelin. There you go. Uh, Singh says, I asked you to do a competition on your subscribers um, who allow them to win kits or bacteria. Uh, yeah, I might do that for the 100,000 um, subscribers. So go and tell all your mates Singh and um, we'll do a, competi a competition at the 100,000 subscriber mark. Um, that subscriber won't get a prize, but we'll run a, um, a, a bit of a, a prize thing going there. And, uh, yeah, I'll check out what kits I've got available and uh, we'll go from there. So that sounds like a great idea. Thomas says, I love stinky cheese. It has ammonia smell and taste. Is this something wrong with you? No, because I like them too. Alex uh, says, is there a cheese you find especially difficult to make and why? Yeah, funny you should say that. Um, I do have a lot of difficulty with blue cheese and don't ask me why. Just one of those things. Um, it tends to be blue flavoured. It, it tastes like blue cheese, but it certainly does not, um, doesn't look like a blue cheese. There's no blue veins through it. And if there is, it's just along the puncture marks where I put it. Um, so either I'm doing something wrong with the cultures and the moulds. Uh, and they're always, all, always fresh. So I don't know. So that's my, that's my nemesis. Um, Justin says, would you be able to make Comte cheese? Um, yes, I can. Where'd my pencil go? I'll put that on the list. I don't think I've made that. Uh, Trevor says, my queso chihuahua seems to be off gassing a bit and filling up the vacuum bag. And there is a very small, subtle spot in the middle. Can I just cut the spot off and it should be fine? Yes, it will be. Um, yeah, so cut that out um, and you can probably repack it if you want. Probably the um, the cultures you used may um, may do a little bit of gas production, but, uh, yeah, check that out. Uh, Jimmy th says, are you ever going to make a Limburger? Well, yes, I am. It's on the list. Uh, Donna says, I tried your Kefletiri cheese the other day um, until I forgot to remove it from the 18% brine it stayed in for 17 hours. Uh, what should I have done and what would I expect? Um, so that's seven hours more than the recipe stated. So it will be, it will tend to be fairly salty. Kefletiri is a normally a fairly salty cheese anyway. I would proceed with the maturation process. Keep going, Donna. I don't think you'll have too many problems. Just to, when you when you chomp into it and uh, make your um, saganaki, don't salt it, whatever you do. But I think it'll be okay. It just would have absorbed more salt. Andy says, um, is this a family venture for you? Uh, do you have any of your kids making cheese? Um, no, none of my kids make cheese, unfortunately. Um, I have taught Ben how to make cheese, the, my youngest. Um, he's 18 now. Um, my daughter, who popped in just a minute ago, um, uh, basically said uh, she's lactose intolerant, but you've seen her in a few videos. Um, and my other daughter, she's uh, she wants to start making cheese, so she, I think she'll start learning soon. But no, it's not a family affair, unfortunately. Um, Sanderson says, for blue cheese, you have to kill the cheese and spray blue mould into it. Oh, mill, not kill. Um, yeah, so I am going to, I tried that with the uh, farmhouse cheddar blue you'll see in a couple of weeks time. Okay. Donna said, um, I forgot that I left it out for two days before putting it in my cheese cave. Um, that's okay. You know, I, mine stayed out for three days. I think it was nearly five, um, to air dry. So that'll be fine. Okay. Mark says, my Swiss is cracking on the edge, aging at room temperature. Uh, will it help to use a ripening box? It's puffing up as it should. Uh, yeah, probably put it into a ripening box to um, lock some of the moisture in there, Mark, because the sounds like the rind is drying out a little bit too fast. Okay, a Weslin. Uh, Weslin, yep. Hey, Mr. Weber, can you consider putting English subtitles into the video 
tutorials. What, can't you understand my Australian accent? Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Um, yes, but they do take a lot of time. There is an auto feature in, in um, YouTube. Um, Dustin says, hey, Gavin, long time no see on the live show. Yeah, unfortunately, I was sick for four. I think I missed about four shows, but I'm a fairly, I'm feeling better now, or better. -er. Uh, Justin, do you have links in all your videos on where to purchase the equipment you use? Uh, yes, there is. So for every cheese that I make, there's a, um, uh, there's links to the, the kits that I use and links to the equipment. It's all at uh, littlegreenworkshops.com.au. So, um, We'll, uh, oh, we've been going for 45 minutes. Uh, we'll go for a couple more questions. Um, so Sanderson says, uh, can you speak in an American accent while reading this? No, I can't do an American accent to save myself. Uh, Molly Wallop, I'm doing, I'm going to be contributing more subtitles soon. Um, thanks very much for the ones you've done already. I really appreciate it. Um, Dustin says uh, that and during the winter months you start when I'm still at work but trying to catch up yeah it's a, a bit of a pain um, daylight savings is finished here and I think northern hemispheres just gone to daylight savings so the hours are even weirder than um, what they used to be before anyway yeah I will wrap it up now <clears throat> if anybody um, uh, would like to um, uh, super chat that's a donation during the show that would be fantastic um, all proceeds going to a games channel and making more cheese videos um, and obviously um, uh, patreon is a great way to support the channel as well uh, for a little as one dollar us you can support the channel ongoing and uh, we uh, we will be producing more videos Obviously, the more money that I, I get on a monthly basis is less work I have to do to pay the bills for the house and more time I can concentrate on um, on making cheese, making videos or making cheese or cheese-related content. Anyway, so um, that's my chat. So Patreon, there should be a link below in the description as well. Uh, don't forget there's the merch store and Kim should be starting to put up links in a minute, I think. Um, so the merch store, which uh, sells T-shirts with um, certified curd nerd, also has mugs and all that sort of stuff. I don't have my mug here with me, which is um, which is unfortunate. Uh, also, all kits and supplies can be found over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au um, or in a pinch, if you can't remember that, then littlegreencheese.com and there's a link to the store there as well. And don't forget that there's a podcast um, which I'm starting up. I keep promising to start, start up. I think it's at episode 64 or something at the moment. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've got a whole bunch of questions that people have been asking since about middle of last year, um, and I've got them stored on my iPad, so I'll be able to pop them through my mixer and, uh, and make a few um, podcast episodes. So hoping to do that very soon as well. Uh, do I have a cheesy joke? Let's have a look. Where's my cheesy joke book? No, it's gone missing. Sorry, Dylan. Missing in action, cheesy joke book. Um, okay. Um, and that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for um, watching the show this week, uh, the Anzac Day special. Um, and uh, we will see you again next Wednesday. Same time and uh, same YouTube channel. See you later, curd nerds. Um, and uh, don't forget, this weekend's video is going to be uh, ricotta salata uh, made with sheep's, made with used milk. Um, and uh, it is a bit of a surprise. All right, see you next time. Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 